Hello and welcome back to King's Quest 7. Uh, we're going to open up here with Chapter 5, Nightmare in Etheria. Uh, hopefully this is just going to be one video and won't be too long, but we will see. Badger of the jury, what is your verdict? On the charge of moon theft, we find her... On the charge of impersonating a folder alien, we find her... Guilty! On the charges of party crashing, sneaking, spying, and appearing in public without fur, feather, or scales, we find her... Guilty! 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 That's not fair, we can't help that. Felonies of Devontry, this is your sentence. You must spend the rest of your life in the jelly bean mines of the faraway kingdom of Wagga Wagga Boing Boing. What? Jelly I never mines. heard of such a place. You just made that up, didn't you? So I did. So I did. Does anyone have an idea for her sentence? Banish her to the plains of petulant possums. Maroon her on the island of ill-natured iguanas. Make her count every grain of bird seed in the land. Make her put the moon back into the sky. <gasps> the people have spoken. You have until sunset to put the moon back in its rightful place in the sky, Valanith. If you do not, you will be fed to a 300-pound hamster in the morning. Yeah. I kind of like the bird seed one. The, the sky is falling! Whoop! The sky is falling! In that case, let us move the party to the sub-sub basement. Guards, remove that hellish creature! Another joyous music, considering we are sitting on a death sentence. Unless we can find a way to return the moon to the sky. However, will we survive? Let's see if we have any help from this guy. I've had about as much of that fellow as I can stand for the moment. Fair enough. For some reason, we offer him this. Here you are, the magic statuette. I feel like there must be a line of dialogue that got missed or deleted somewhere and along the line. here is your weird beast, Sev, my lady Valanice. Thank you. How does it work? You must apply it to your body. First, it must be mixed with a bit of animal hair. Animal hair? What kind? Why, whatever animal you wish to transform into. However, I would not recommend a fat mouse or a juicy squirrel. <laughs> Excuse me, my lady. <clears throat> I must go and consult my statuette. Interesting. All right, so yes, we have this werebeast formula. I don't know what good it'll do us right now, but... Yeah, I don't remember him ever mentioning the um, statuette at any point in time, but who knows. First, however, we must return the moon to the sky. We will do so in the most scientific way possible. Via slingshot. And we did not pull that back very far, considering the kind of distance we put on that moon, but that's okay. Goodbye, rubber chicken that's alive now. Ah, congratulations, oh hairless one. Thank you have returned the moon to the sky. <laughs> you are granted a full pardon. Oh, thank you, Archduke Yip Yap. Never let it be said that Archduke Fifila Yip Yap, fearless warhound of Folderol, cannot be merciful. Now, 
If you'll excuse me, the volcano is smoking, so I'm off to hide in the basement. Fearless Warhound. Well, I guess we're allowed to leave now. Alright, set out the door. We go about our business. And the question now is, what will this were beast potion allow us to do? But get through the forest of the were beasts. And of course we have to walk all the way around. That's okay. Shall survive this indignity. No reason to go talk to the stone face guy again. Nor do I remember whether or not he has anything actually to say. We're doing a lot of adventuring through various areas in this episode. Um, it's part of the reason why it's the longest chapter. Chapter 4 is reasonably long as well, but generally 5 lasts a lot longer. Um, a lot of back and forth and um, stopping in on various regions multiple times, but we'll come back to all that. He is busy trying to heal the Lady Ceres, or at least stop her wound from growing worse. our salve here. We added some jackalope fur. And I don't know if we use it out here or once we step in here, but let's find out. Yeah, looks like we do it out here. We use our salve. Gross oh, noises. I feel so strange. It's embarrassing. Hate to see it. Man, look where we are. Don't think I've ever run so fast in my in my life. It's so bad you're not faster. Hey, thanks, buddy. Noble Attis. He was true to his word. You remember, he warned us about the swamp monster after, um, I think he said he would help us after we, uh, restored the, or half restored Hello. the forest. Yeah, I don't want to talk to you, Seymour. Hello! Hello! Yeah. We'll deal with you. Uh, yeah, but we half restored the forest by, um... Collecting the nectar of life, or whatever it was called. Hey, look who's back! Hey, the delightful that children. That wasn't very nice. Hit him with a stick. Um, we will leave the screen for a moment. And then we'll come back. Let's go talk to the dog, hopefully. I'll try one more time just to see if... Yes, we have to wait for the... I don't know what you call it, elevator to come down. We'll ride it up. Hop in on these dear little children. And we will borrow a little item from them. Grab the bone, which uh, Mummy seemed to kind of want to hold on to, but was willing to let go ultimately. Appreciate that. I don't remember if all of these exit the same way, but a 
this comes out here, and then we would have to come down. So yeah, let's go. Oh no, I trapped. Oh well. Let's see what happens. I feel like I'm gonna get eaten. Yeah. Oh dear, I should be more careful around big spiders. Sounds so creepy. Um, all right, we have our femur, so let's leave. Very good. All right. Um, actually, we're gonna go this way first. Have to keep our eye out for the boogeyman. Though I don't know if he ever shows up on those two screens. I'm not certain. Particularly this one. Ghost Shadow Dog. Oh. Entering the physical realm this time. Very barky. Luckily, we have just what the doctor ordered. Good dog. Maybe the vet. Nice dog. There you go, pup. Maybe now he won't want to eat us. What do you got to say? There like that dog? Now. You're not such a bad dog after all. And you are not such a bad human. Well, that he's Scottish. You are the first creature to be kind to me since I lost my master and mistress. Thank you. You poor fellow. What happened to your people? My master was beheaded by Malicia's foul gargoyle and cursed to ride the skies in search of his head. My mistress died of grief shortly thereafter. And I? I tried to defend my home when the boogeyman came to burn it. I failed. Stupid Your man. master was... Count Zepish. He was. I was proud to fight at his side. I would like to help your master. If I recovered his head, do you think the curse would be lifted? We can only hope. Here, take my master's medal. It may help you in the search. And thank you, brave lady. Shiny. Oh, that's nice. You should come with us. We could use an animal companion. Yes, now we have a nice fancy metal. So we'll bring this with us. And... Immediately get rid of it. She seems sad. We could use a memento. Here you are. You know, doesn't seem to have made her much happier. Let's see. Count Vladimir Tsepish, fearless warrior, devoted husband, and Lord Protector of Uga Booga Land. Hmm. Uh oh. Yep, can't step in the way. Otherwise he'll run us down. And we will perish. Alright, there we go. Lord Tepish. Couple of uh, bugs that get generated in this chapter. One of them dealing with another ethereal horse, though a different one. Why, hello. Yes. Doctor. Oh my! You bear a stunning resemblance to a young lady I met earlier this evening. That must have been my daughter, Rosella. My dear lady, do come in. So excitable. Do love the good doctor. 
So you are the mother of the charming Miss Rosella. Pleased to meet you, lady. Valenice of Daventry, sir. What a lovely name! I am Dr. Mort Cadaver. What can I do for you, Lady Valenice? Now, let's see. When was the last time you saw my daughter? Where was she going? I saw her but a few short hours ago. She asked me about the Troll King, and very kindly brought me a new backbone. I do not know where she was headed. I assume she's currently buried Dr. underground. Dr. Cadaver, how was Rosella when you spoke with her? Did she seem well? Oh, abundantly so. She was the liveliest creature I've seen in years. Doesn't mean much in an undead society, but Dr. fair enough. Dr. Cadaver, I hope this isn't rude of me, but is everyone in Ooga Booga, well, dead? As a doornail, for the most part. Forgive me, Lady Valenice, but I have to make a house call. Fair enough. Good evening, Valenice. I will let you know if I hear word of Rosella. Thank you, Doctor. Good night. The doctor is out. All right, so gotta stop in, learn that Rosella is in the area. Uh, but what we really need is to get in to um, the Lord Tepesh's tomb. <laughs> in the hopes of recovering his head. And we will do so in a very slow fashion. Because this is the first of the little uh, problems that occur in this chapter. In that you are supposed to have enough time if you go quickly with this firecracker hmm. to the tomb. But basically, you know, internal system stuff that I don't understand run too fast with uh, the new systems, and it just keeps exploding. But luckily, you remain where you were, let it explode, so you just get to continue on. Hmm. It's an annoyance, but one that is easily resolved, which is nice. Put the firecracker in the lock. Very nice. Let's head in. We will move the lid. Oh my, poor Count Zepish. And we now have a skull. Very nice. Skull lost all of its tissue, sinew, muscle, everything rather quickly, but that's okay. We remain off to the side. We wait here. Perhaps with a new mask on. Maybe we can wear this to the next masquerade ball. We offer it to the Headless Horseman. Or not. Apparently I did not click. So now we will wait again. I'm going to leave the screen just in case you have to. I don't think so, but... Oh, oh. Give, me, give, it, give it to him. There we go. <laughs> and the curse is broken. Looking a little blue in the face, but otherwise fine. You have lifted the curse that was placed on me, my lady. I am deeply indebted to you. Black Valiant. Why didn't he come from his house where he was just staying? I don't know. Elspeth, my Elspeth. How I have missed you, my love. And are you my dearest darling? Oh, that's nice. Well, you have done me an immeasurable kindness. 
Tell me what I can do for you in return. I must find a way to Etheria, Count Seppish. It is imperative. I have heard that you may be able to help me. Consider it done. I will give you the use of my horse. Here, take this fife. With it, you can call him to take you to Etheria. Once there, you cannot summon him, for he will not be able to hear you. But he will always come to you anywhere on the surface lands. Thank you, Count. It is nothing. Fly, Necromancer! Carry the lady to Etheria! Whee! Alright. Thank you, Necromancer. Yes, I don't really know what a uh, fife is, but there's be some kind of flute whistle type thing. And now we do have our animal companion. <clears throat> Doesn't quite stay with us, but at least he's here to help. That's, that's a start. This right here is one of the more difficult puzzles. Depending on exactly how musically inclined you are. Um, in fact, really I should wait, but I'll do this now. So those notes that the um, little butterflies play are the notes you're supposed to play on here. And let's see if I can do this right. People with a good musical ear, that's probably not very difficult. For me, that took a lot of time. Hello, little weird people. Who, what are you doing? Who are you? We are the fates, mortal. I am Clotho. I spin the fates of women and men. I am Lachesis. I measure the fates of women and men. I am Atropos. I sever the fates of women and men. What do you want of us, daughter of humanity? <laughs> daughter of humanity. My daughter is imprisoned by Militia, and I fear for her life. I must see Oberon and Titania immediately. Where did you learn these names? You cannot. The king and queen have gone on a journey, seeking their own lost child. Take your case to Mab, the Lady of Dreams. Where is this Mab? How can I find her? She lives beyond the waking world, on an island of dreams and nightmares. It cannot be reached in the waking reality. Whee! Well, that wasn't quite as helpful as I would have liked, but that's a start. Apparently, I need to find Mob, the Lady of Dreams. And I'm not going to watch this every time. Butterflies come, they do the song again. It's a chance for you to continually hear it so that you can eventually solve the puzzle. I forgot that she walks extremely slowly on this screen. I don't know if it's just because these butterflies are moving constantly, but it's an annoyance. And we're going to have to come here several times. But, we'll deal with that problem later. First we will climb up this winding staircase of a mountain. But, at least we don't constantly fall off like we did in all the previous King's Quest games. And for that, we thank you. So we could come this way. We will find a <coughs> rather unfriendly critter. Oh, oh what a no. hideous beast! I could use some advice on how to avoid that thing. Yes, so we won't go there, but let's see what this is. Hmm, a lot of reach. Maybe with some help. little jump up like a couple inches. This wind force here. Oh, did he knock us down? That's weird. Let's get our 
free. No, stop doing that. Here, sure. Come on, stop it. That took so long. We're probably gonna get blown down again. All in all, this is not going well. All right, good. Now we have our fruit. Very good. Knocked us down. Congratulations. I'm proud of you. Oh no. Okay. Oh no. Yeah. Well, I never. Some people are so rude. So yeah, the things on the screen just don't really flow the way that they're supposed to. Um, so you are supposed to be able to avoid those things, and it's going to be a problem that comes up later. But again, luckily the game is designed in a way where death really doesn't matter, um, and you're able to just start again right away. Otherwise, those points would be significantly more annoying than they are. They're still pretty annoying, but could be worse. Now we shall skip the butterflies, and we will make use of these rainbows that we saw when we first came up here to this eldritch realm of Etheria. Although I think the entire land we've been in this whole game is eldritch, but it's fine. And I always forget which one leads where, but we'll just take a couple of journeys down some rainbows and hope we find our way. Each one leads to a different area of the Overland map. And this is exactly where we want to go. Let's come across here. I don't remember if I looked at this. This is the Ambrosia, which, if you remember, we were told by um, the Mountain Spirit that we had to get the Nectar of Life, and we had to get Ambrosia and put it in the Cornucopia. Now we will have completely restored the forest. At least we will once we take this pomegranate. Hello, pomegranate. And deliver it to the Lady Sarah's. Actually, we'll probably give it to Lord Addis, is my guess, but. Tomato, tomato, you know? Streamlining things a little bit, so we're not doing too badly on time thus far. That's cute, playing her some music. I have replenished the cornucopia, Lord Attis. See, this strange fruit was part of its bounty. Strange fruit. A pomegranate? The pomegranate is the symbol of birth and death, of regeneration. Perhaps it could help my series. But no, or it'll kill I him. dream. Well, let's give it a shot. What if you just like slapped the branch with it? My love, my love. Sweet husband, how I missed you. I cannot stay, Ceres. I must go to Etheria. And do what I can to help. The volcano. I know, love. I have work to be done as well. The forest has sustained much damage from Alicia's ugly curse. And I must make it right. A lot of reunions happening. You have my nice. deepest thanks, dear lady. And you... You are very welcome, Show Lady Sirius. Farewell, my friend. That's all you got? Give me advice. Tell me what to do. Well, that wasn't very helpful. Let's call our horse. Apparently we have to do over there. You know what? 
We have to find the Lady of Dreams. Perhaps we need to be dreaming. Let's try this one. And I can think of but one place where we can get some comfortable sleep. Here in the land of Eldritch. Nope, go away. I didn't Not interested, Seymour. You are too annoying. <laughs> Forgot about this. Yeah, the kids are celebrating the impending apocalypse, which is quite fitting for them. I like it. My dear Lady Valenice, what brings you back to this neck of the boneyard? Dr. Cadaver. I have a, a terrible problem. Come in, come in. How can I help you, Lady Valenice? It's a long story, Doctor. But what it comes down to is that I must travel to Dreamland to see Lady Mab. But I can't find a safe place to sleep. Is that all? Don't worry, my lady. Just climb into my coffin here. It's lined with pure dream silk. You'll be asleep in no time. Dream silk. Sounds nice. What's up with these spare parts? Why the box of spare parts? As you probably know, my lady, the volcano is about to erupt. I am expecting a lot of damage in Ooga Booga. So I stocked up on arms and legs and such. I like that. Adds a little dash of realism to the impending doom. I suppose doom. I could try to sleep here. Please do. I'll make sure you're not disturbed. Thank you. Here you are, my dear. Sweet dreams. Oh, the lady just throws a cloth on her face. All right, let's see how this goes. swim through a sea of dreams after being attacked by some kind of nightmare. What do we have here? Colosseum of some nature? Oh goodness. Looks like the Lady Mab has seen better days. My lady, are you all right? I went to Dreamland, and Mab, uh, she was frozen. She was a solid block of ice. Oh dear, Mab was never known for her warm personality. But that doesn't sound right at all. No, it does not. It looks like things are worse than we knew. I must go. Thank you, Dr. Cadaver. You've been very kind. I wish you the best of luck, Lady Valenice. Farewell! Alright. 
So I believe I have to go to one of two places. And I forget which one's which. But I'm going to start with the Fates. They are the ones who told me to talk to the Lady Mab and such. Or as such. I feel like they should know that she is currently on ice. Walking so slowly all of the time. Goodbye, butterflies. Alright, let's come up here. Play a little tune on the harp. One, five, six, four. And away. Hello, friends. I have seen Mab, and she has been frozen into a lifeless statue of ice. Ice always melts in the spring, mortal. Perhaps the Lady of Spring can tell you what may be done. Ooh. She of the flowers. She of the forest. Very nice. All right. So it seems we must talk to the Lady of Spring and the Lady of the Forest, which of course is the Lady Ceres. I don't remember. I think if you go in, they might explicitly say Ceres, just in case you didn't get the hint. Um, they may even remind you about the uh, Ambrosia if um, that isn't um, done yet at this point, although I am not certain of that at all. Either way, let us head back to the forest to meet with our lady. Alrighty. She slowly makes several flowers. Lady Ceres, may I ask a question of you? Anything. I have seen Mab, Lady of Dreams, and she has been placed under a terrible curse. She's been frozen like a block of ice. Lady of Spring, what can be done for her? Frozen, you say? Let me think. I do recall a legend, yes. You must fill a shaft of crystal with purest sunlight. With that, you can thaw her. But I must warn you, you cannot take any physical objects into the land of dreams while you are asleep, my lady. You will have to travel there awake. Anything else? Lady Ceres, how am I to travel to the realm of dreams while awake? What must I do? I... I do not know, child of humans. Perhaps you should speak with the three fates. There's very little they do not know. Alright, so... We have to get crystal of purest sunlight and speak to the fates. I think I'm going to pursue this crystal first. And well... Valenice herself, I don't believe, has ever come across any crystals. We actually have. It's just while we were playing as Rosella. Fortunately, it's not in a very safe location, but it's just a risk we're going to have to take. We'll head over here. in back of Malisha's little hobble here. 
And the dog is barking, so we will leave. Come this way to the where forest. And let's try again. Waiting for her to not to be there. Very good. All right, let's head in. Daintily and slowly. It's uh -oh. our big night, my widow cuddles. We're gonna blow that rotten oldie theory right out of the sky. And we just might take the rest of the world with it, won't we, kissy boy? <laughs> Very mad, mad person, it would seem. I don't know if I believe entirely, or I just wait. I kinda wanna go back up and see what happens. Ah. That's about what I expected. Ah. I can give it a stick. It's too bad there won't be anyone left to admire my beauty, Cuddles. What do you have in your mouth? Let me see. Hey? No matter, you naughty boy. Let's go watch the fireworks. All right, head up. Come out here. And let's grab a crystal. We have to do a little more traveling. While we do have a crystal, it is not yet filled with the purest sunlight. It's still dull and empty. So, apparently we need more room. Let's call our friend. I was looking for very pure light. Seems like being out here would be a reasonable place to be, up in this godly realm. But, oh, excellent. Another option is, of course, the desert. So, <coughs> we're looking for a particular shaft of light think of one that goes back to essentially the first puzzle we ever solved. Now we can head over here, come back into the temple. I believe we will still be greeted by rather aggressive music. No, maybe not. And we can fill our crystal with sunlight. Did too bad on time. All right, now we have a crystal shaft with sunlight. We'll step outside, summon our stallion, and speak to the fates about how we can enter the dream world physically. Much nicer if we could just ride the horse around. Seems like that would go faster. Oops. I think it's impressive that I've managed to forget to put away the fife every single time, but. Some of these had consistency, right? Oh, wait. 
I think this is our final visit to the Fates. There might be one more, but I think this is it. Fortunately, no more musical interlude after this. Ceres, and she has told me that I must enter the land of dreams while awake. How can I do this, great ladies? You must cheat the fabric of reality. You must ride on the wings of a dream. There is only one who can do such a thing. Our nephew, the weaver of dreams. You will need this. It sometimes pleases our nephew to surround himself with the darkest terrors of night. Farewell, Valenice. Bye. The darkest terrors of night. Well, I can think of one particular location where I encountered a very dark terror. Two dark terrors, actually. Both of which killed us, but Okay. This time, we come prepared. Very slowly prepared. All right. Let's climb the spiral mountain again. Sadly, not for the last time. As I said, a lot of back and forth and repetition in this chapter, which doesn't necessarily make for bad story, but um, can certainly get old. All right, so let's use our dream catcher, which is, of course, what this is. Let's catch this nightmare. You look so secure. Interesting. I don't know why it squealed like a pig, but you know, whatever works. Ah, the Weaver of Dreams. Hello, friend. Excuse me. Hello? Not very interested, but perhaps if we give him an offering. Your aunts, the fates, gave me this object to get past your nightmare. My business with you is most urgent. You captured my nightmare in that little thing. How amusing. How irritating. I suppose I should have had a second creature on hand, but I seldom weave more than one at a time. Nightmares are solitary creatures, you know. They will destroy each other on sight. Hmm. Dream Weaver, listen to me. Oberon and Titania are missing, and Mab has been horribly cursed. I must reach her Isle of Dreams while awake and cure her, or all will be lost. My precious sister is missing. You must go to Mab immediately. Wait, I will give you something. I like Valenice using her mom voice. Even with these godlike creatures. When you ride this magical tapestry, you can travel through dreams in the flesh. But be warned, you will be vulnerable. Hurry, mortal, hurry. See if we can just do it from here. Magic carpet. One thing we have to keep in mind is what he said about nightmares destroying each other on sight. So we'll have to defend ourselves. Nightmare to nightmare. Alright. 
plummet down through back to the ocean. Yes, yes, yes. Very nice. Alright, let's head inside. Free the Lady Mab. Ooh, very shimmery. Maybe she'll be nice. Oh, who are you? I am Valenice of Daventry, my Lady Mab. I urgently need your help. Militia has ignited the volcano and Oberon and Titania cannot be found. Militia! That vicious creature enchanted me so that she could destroy us all. Well, she won't succeed. You must send the winds to find the king and queen. I? How am I to do that? You must harness the wind, Sirocco, and ride into the top of the mountain of winds. King Leventhal will surely help you. I must go, brave Valenice. I must try to hold back the volcano's explosion. Thank you for freeing me from my prison of ice. If we all survive this, I will send you only sweet dreams for the rest of your life. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Luckily, she popped us basically right where we needed to be. She gave us this bridle to harness the winds. And we're going to come to... Another fairly annoying part, simply due to a uh, glitch in the game secondary to the you know, systems now operating so much faster than they were initially supposed to. And it can be quite difficult to get this part to work properly. I believe we're supposed to either hang out now, now, either hang out up here or down here. And then, yes. Um, so if you're out here and you try to catch the, the horse, it'll always go past and Valenice will always move too slowly. <laughs> the rascal! You big bully! What have I told you about eating people? What have I told you? Oh, Ma! I was just playing. Don't lie to me, young man! What's going on here? Who are you? I am Levanter, King of the Wind. Who are you? <laughs> I am Valenice of Daventry. Your Majesty, we must summon Oberon and Titania. The Lady Militia plans to detonate the volcano, and all of Eldritch will be destroyed. Winds, come to me. Come to me now. Find the Lord and Lady of Etheria. Apparently there's only four winds. Which actually I think is accurate. One for each direction. Though I forget uh, any of their names or properties. Just constantly searching. Militia has ignited the volcano. Are you sure of this? See for yourself, my lord Oberon. Sweet Mother Nature. We thank you, mortal. You are valiant and brave. Come, my husband. We must try to undo what has been done. I only pray that we can. And 
so ends chapter five. I actually got through that quicker than I thought I would. Um, still a long video, but um, we have completed that, and we'll be back next time with the sixth and final chapter. So we'll see you later. Bye.